Hello. Hi, I'm Patricia. How are you today? In today's video, I want to talk to you about uh, somewhat of a touchy subject. It's the ego. And the title of this, you know, the ego must die. Now, a lot of times we think of the other person having the ego, a big ego, too much ego, too much ego is involved, um, people are egoic, they're narcissistic, they just think of themselves on and on and on. Like there's degrees of that that get worse and worse and worse. I'm going to pose out a question here, throw it out there. Why must the ego die? Does it really die? Do we want it to die? What is its purpose anyway? So in this video, I want to give you three main reasons, the three reasons, the biggies, why the ego must die. The first one is anxiety, okay? Anxiety can affect everyone. In fact, it's supposed to affect everyone, particularly on your journey. But why is that and who wants to feel it? Anxiety is like a warning bell. Anxiety is a feeling. And yet for some people, they live there. It is their zip code. They live in the zip code of anxiety. They live in the area of every day is a crisis. Everything is a crisis because that's how it feels. They quite literally feel anxious about things. It can't be helped. Other people around them think that that person, it's in their mind. They're making it up. No. This journey is about healing. That is the very first thing. So anxiety as a topic, this is a biggie that needs to heal. Why would you need to heal anxiety if it's part of your warning system? Because it's been too extreme. Because it affects the nerves. Because it's quite literally people getting on your last nerve. You have one nerve. It's all frayed. It's laying on the ground and everyone's stepping on it. You feel overly sensitive. You're an empath. You can detect when someone's lying, when something's making you nervous. Yeah, you're supposed to. But being too empathic, that isn't healthy for you either. If you're getting caught up in other people's dramas, it will have an effect. If you're getting caught in world dramas, it will have an effect. If you're an actual part of that drama, you're going to have some PTSD that you still have to address. If it's happening really close to home for you, close to the heart, it's going to have an effect. We are living in a time where that sense of togetherness that we had in the pandemic, like, woohoo, we're all in this together. Nobody gives a crap about that. Now is a time where there are a lot of anxious things. There are nervous things, financial things, mental things, beliefs. This all contributes to a general topic that is where Many of us either live, have lived, or are still living, called anxiety, okay? Anxiety is a real thing. It is not made up by the mind. It's not imaginary. And we need to take away the stigma, the shame. We need to stop hiding it and start addressing it properly. Anxiety exists for a purpose. So we have to get back to the real reason of why someone might need to feel anxious and get rid of the accumulation of deep reasons why it's become such a problem for so many people. Why do they need to medicate? Why do they over-medicate? Why do they self-medicate? Why can't they sleep? Why do their dreams show them fearful, anxious things? Why, why, why? Why me? Okay, there are people that don't necessarily get a deathly illness. They get this kind of stuff, and they will still say, why me? I have headaches. I feel things. I don't feel good. I don't feel good about things. I don't feel good about this state of being. There are other factors, and I incorporate nutritional suggestions. 
the proper supplements to help, the proper 5D love integration to help you be who you came here to be. In other words, the integration of the 5D twin flame body that discards and does not hold an accumulation of stuff. It's having a brand new relationship, even with a topic such as anxiety, social anxiety, job anxiety, interview anxiety, family anxiety, financial anxiety. I mean, we go down a list. Okay, so that's the number one thing. Why must your ego die? There we go. Number one. Number two. Number two codependencies. Now this tags in because this involves what do we do? What are our coping mechanisms? And even more importantly, and sorry guys, but this is a big thing that men do, who do you put it on? Everyone's already trying to shove it down. Shove it on to, you know, the subordinates at work. Shove it on to the cashiers at, you know, some place, some unwitting person. Shove it on to the kids. All of the disgust and the nervousness and the sense of inadequacy, where does it go? Well, it, you know, some people don't want it with themselves. They want to literally dump it off on someone else. They want to trauma dump it. And this is one of the worst codependencies. They're going to look for a handy little target, okay? And sometimes the littler, okay? And some of you grew up in those families, you grew up in a family that, you know, maybe all you can say is, God, we were so toxic. Maybe you didn't know it as a child or a teenager. Maybe you didn't know it that your parents were coping with their own form of self-medicating, drugs and alcohol, smoking, okay? Maybe you lived in such a toxic environment, you couldn't see the forest for the trees. I'm here to get you out of that forest. I'm here to help you break the codependencies that have been deeply embedded in blocking your chakras and get your love connections going. Not just self-love, but higher 5D love because that is the healing love. That is the love that feels passionate as it goes in. That is a love that helps you get back what belongs to you, that whatever you have sublimated, whatever you have had to compromise on. What are some of the worst codependencies? What is that? It's how do people handle their, you know, anxiety and tension with people. There is a theme for this coming up season, and the theme is interpersonal tension. That's why the ego must die. So that, number one, you stand a chance. Number two, you're not affected so much by other people's ego and not your own either. What are codependencies? I'm going to be covering that in my class, and I guarantee you when you join, you're going to like find that light bulb, and you're going to be like, whoa, yeah, that's been happening. I have the solutions. The solutions are through the light body. If you're not doing the proper twin flame body work, my tr trademarked modality gets results, okay, and it gets results for people in a relatively short amount of time. Yes, people have issues. We all do, okay? I have my days where it takes me three days to process, a week to process. But the thing that I do do is I push myself through the process. I don't ignore it. I don't just like watch a video like it's a weather report. I created my modality to specifically help people expedite this stuff and not linger five years in therapy, 10 years in therapy, medications, gateway meds that make it worse and worse sometimes for some people. I'm not against medication. I'm not against some plant medicine. But the, for your angel, angelic side, you are a human angel. At some point, there's a boundary set. You know, just like with antibiotics and someone will say like, you know what, I think I'm done with that antibiotic. Now, I know there's people out there, they don't take anything. I don't believe in that either. I believe in there is all of us who are trained and gifted in certain things to help when the help is needed. Right now on your journey, this is the help that's needed. It is entirely new. It is... I work in the 5th to the 12th dimension. I'm a Blu-ray. It is Ascended Blu-ray 
union work to help people. It is specific for starseeds. There is another wave of starseeds that needs to get rid of codependencies, anxiousness, and the third thing that I'm going to talk about, being the living vibrating example. Now, you may have seen that sometimes certain things, while they may have helped in the past, just don't help anymore. It's the same old stuff, SOS, same old stuff, or same day, you know, you know, nothing's different from day to day. Okay. If you are not clearing your channels, if you are not opening your brand new chakras, which are your new love connections, you cannot be the living vibrating example. It doesn't matter how much you go out there and rail against the system or rail against the man. If you're not focusing on right where it counts and you're getting caught up in other dramas, you can't fix anything. It's like being on a plane where if you don't put that oxygen mask on yourself, you can't put it on someone else and help them, okay? My work, my twin flame body modality helps you to be strong. It helps you with stamina. It helps you with love. And it helps you with those nudges from your higher self because this is the true integration. What we do helps you discard and integrate your love connection so you can vibe it out. Okay, there is a third energy that awakens human angelics, twin flame people can actually do, and that is to vibe the third energy, what we call the third energy, and it's actually love. Okay, although it feels different in different parts of the body, you feel it down here, feels pretty sexual or sexy. You feel it up here, it feels very loving, and you feel it around here, it feels so passionate, like whoa, we are having this mind-blowing, out-of-body love affair in this world. Okay, we met and it's just on. We are passionate beyond all belief. You can't get there if you're focused on the negatives. We want to help you and I have techniques and guidance to help you focus on it so that you can do it because it takes proactivity. You have to physically do it and participate. You can't just do this, okay? We have to engage parts of your light body specifically to shift it. So my, my company is called Twin Flames Merge. I teach the merges that shift and transform, okay? I'm not here to tell you that, you know, you have to do all of this heavy lifting and you have to be a martyr sacrificing yourself for love again. I'm here to teach you how to do it new so that you feel good and that's the bottom line. Now let me leave you with one last thought. He woke you up or she woke you up. Okay, how are you going to wake them up? You have to do that. That is how this works. One wakes up the other energetically, you could say. Okay, 5D, energetically, etherically. The other has to do the wake up through the body. That is what I teach. And people have phenomenal experiences. At my workshop that I did, the live workshop, someone had an hour-long etheric makeout session. Now, a lot of people are not together. Are you breaking up with someone? Are you breaking up with your twin flame? Please come and join because definitely the ego is involved. So check out the link below. We are starting in March. The shit is hitting the fan. I'm just going to say that. It's already. I knew it was coming. April is not going to be that much better, but you can be better. Okay? Collectively, there's a lot of garbage to shake out. Don't be one of those people that, you know, lingers with it and, you know, goes, oh, oh, let's get busy. Let's roll up our sleeves and get proactive about it because only you can control your ascension and journey. You do it through the twin flame body work. I have the first modality of its kind that is comprehensive and covers mental, spiritual, emotional, physical, financial, yeah, even financial. 
and romance and passion. It's all a part of you. You are all those things. You're not one dimensional. You are a multidimensional, multifaceted, sparkling, glittering individual, and you deserve your unified relationship. If you don't feel like you're on the same page with someone, that'll be ego issues. So come and join. I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you. Bye.